I've recently gotten a lot of mad red pillar comments. These dudes were writing dissertations and it was funny and stupid, but it was also informational. It gave me a more full understanding of how the red pill hooks people, especially certain types of people. You may have noticed this is a very diverse ideology. They're more colorful than a bag of M&Ms. Growing up, these dudes feel like they've been sold a false fairy tale. That being, if you're a kind, chivalrous man, a woman will fall in love with you. Cinderella will be gagging for it if you offer to carry her books, that kind of thing. Of course, that's retarded. You can't just be a vapid door opening potato like a surface level feminist, which is the kind of personality they lean on. I tried the whole friendly ally feminist thing and it didn't work. So inevitably when they don't get success, that illusion gets shattered. The realities of the sexual nature of human is nothing but dark. We've been sold and brainwashed. We've been told dating and sex and love is like this kind of fairy tale. But it's not Jeffrey. In real life, Fiona would have gotten with Farquaad. Consequently, they might find the red pill. They get drilled with stuff about hypergamy and a lot of evolutionary psychology, which basically all boils down to the fact that you need to bring value to people through some combination of looks, personality, emotional support, financial support, being funny, having a big dick, whatever it is, right? On its face, that sounds fine, but to a red pillar, this is betrayal and it spirals them into some weird places. So what I mean, women use the dominant hierarchy to select mates. We split off from lobsters about 350 million years ago and they still live in dominant hierarchies. That's older than trees. It's older than flowers. We've evolved for the hierarchy. But the biggest step in people becoming red pilled are just personal experiences. Maybe they have bad experiences on dating apps in which a mid girl might get a hundred matches before someone like me can even get a couple. And one of those will be a bot. They see so many OnlyFans girls making truckloads of money. They see how other dudes are thirsting for chicks just like they do. And this comes with the realization. Clearly women just kind of need to exist and they can have almost whoever they want. Remember a second ago when I listed all the ways you need to bring value to a relationship? Yeah, red pillars don't believe that concept applies to women. Reality is, Women get their value up front. Men have right. to become. That's just how it is. For red pillars, the world skull fucked their idyllic fairy tale so hard, they now view relationships as some sort of hyper transactional hellscape where men are basically walking wallets slash security guards who all have to compete for the female breeding machines. Don't believe the fairy tale blue pill lies. This is what people actually select for. Men want a woman that's gonna be a dutiful wife and mother first. Naturally submissive, attractive woman that's gonna follow my lead. It's not just that we need to go back to traditional gender roles, it's that we're being unnaturally and maliciously pushed away from them by some conspiring larger forces. We're men, we're masculine, women, we're feminine. And it goes quite deep because then you start to realize like these governments and societal structures and also some dark shit might be happening to actually destroy the country from the inside. They think these forces are making young men soft loser virgins. The kind that women just cannot find attractive. And what do you do if you're one of these people? You get out the matrix, you compete, you get better. Wake up! So you need to get as much money as you can, get ripped, get jacked, make yourself valuable, a high value man. This way you can climb up the dominance hierarchy so you can finally get bitches. I want you to see life as a man, as a competitive race. This is why the self-improvement and red pill worlds are so interconnected online. When they come across this ideology, it's like a shining light for them. And that might lead to positive results, which reinforces their new beliefs and they bolt with it. Not realizing that all this while, they're getting lost in the sauce. All sense of romanticism, chemistry, just two people gelling and vibing off each other. That no longer exists. Which is really like Disney-fied. Oh, like in our relationship, we're like best friends. If you're a masculine man, you want to be friends with a feminine woman. This is unironically the foundation for most people, but to these guys, it's ridiculous. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Hassan, Chowdhury, black avatars. Clearly in this community, it's a sizable disproportionate amount of South Asians, Arabs, and black people. Just look at all the popular big gurus, right? Andrew Tate, half black. Fresh and fit, black slash Arab. Nico, whatever the fuck he is. Hamza, South Asian. And as the self-appointed brown spokesman. I think I kind of understand why. I think there's a lot that goes into this. I think partly it's a conservative upbringing, a traditional upbringing. Bringing. things that are more common in minority and immigrant backgrounds. Those fundamental beliefs clash a lot with like modern woke messaging. This generation feels like they don't have their foot in any door. The messages they get are confusing. Gone are the rocks of ideas like true love or God. Irony poisoned entertainment has murdered those concepts. How their parents or community might talk about stuff like relationships or dating, that is if they even discuss them at all, versus how it's talked about broadly in the media, versus what your personal inclinations might be. There's a lot of conflicting mess there for a young man to go through. That's with the added thing of just feeling on the fringe just because you're not white. So yeah, is it any wonder that they feel lied to or that they tend to be a little lost in this department? So when there are some compelling
compelling answers, they latch to it, just to feel solid ground again. Side note, this is also why a lot of red pillars return to religion. And fortunately, a big part I think is also an upbringing where you feel less attractive than those around you. That is the case for a lot of brown and Asian men growing up in the 2000s. They feel invisible, especially to girls for a long time. And it's not even without merit. These dudes are generally viewed as less attractive. And the media, especially 10-15 years ago, was constantly implicitly and sometimes explicitly signaling that too. Do you like Asian men? No. Pretty sure Sneeko has spoken multiple times about how he felt like an ugly Asian nerd growing up. When I was younger, I looked full Asian, so I also had to fight the small dick stereotype. Girls ignored me, men didn't respect me, I was this angry internet dude for a long time. And he's even worse now. But anyway, Hamza has said similar stuff too. For a long time, I thought I was ugly, and I genuinely thought that there was nothing I could do about it. I thought I was ugly simply because I was brown skinned. Personally, these aren't things I felt much, for a variety of reasons. So obviously your mileage may vary, and even if these factors exist for someone, doesn't mean they have to go down this path. And you know, I think it can feel a little glib and obvious to just say red pillars all have some deep-seated insecurity, but sometimes the obvious thing is right. Like just look at their idols and how hard they signal their ooga booga, I have a bugatti, I slam lots of models mate, follow me and I'll get you there too. Their followers feel inadequate and want these flashy eye-catching things, which includes the girls. They don't even tell you how to get rich, only that you should. Well, unless you count their shitty courses, which only lines their own pockets. For the followers, trying to attain the stuff is an attempted shortcut for getting attention, respect, and the validation they were denied growing up. I don't think most of these dudes like pose a threat to women or society or anything. For, like 90% of them, I think this is just a phase they go through. And once they meet someone in real life they actually like, a lot of these beliefs, even if they hold them intellectually, they won't practice them and kind of fade away. This is my ultimate hopium, that they take the hard work stuff and leave the rest. You know, in my previous videos, I went through some of the fundamental arguments like in a logical, empirical way, but I don't think that's why most of these people get to their positions. I think it's mostly like a spiritual and emotional void, which I'm not as good at wrestling with, but yeah. That's all. See you next time. Peace.